Hello, everyone. Today we're here with Doha Ben Alaya, who is a lecturer in social psychology at the Higher Institute of Human Sciences of Tunis in Tunisia, Tunis El Manar University. Her interests concern the lay thinking according to the social representations theory by Moscovici in 1961. She is conducting several researches since several years within the Tunisian context related to current societal issues such as violence, citizenship, the Salafist Dihaj thinking. She also develops an epistemological reflection on the object notion in the social representations theory and on the relationship between social thinking and culture. Finally, she applies discourse content analysis on representational objects, allowing to highlight the basic postulates underlying the social thinking. So Doha, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. The stage is all yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Digo. Uh, bom dia a todos. First of all, I would like to thank all my Brazilian colleagues that made possible our collaboration and this conference given from Tunisia. My thanks go today especially to Professor Edna Chamon and without forgetting, of course, Professor Clarissa Prado, without whom this collaboration wouldn't have existed. The issue I will talk about is inspired by a theoretical current founded by Serge Moscovici. This current is that of the social thinking and the social representations theory founded in 1961. This perspective represents an actual revolution in social sciences, since, since it calls into question a purely cognitive approach of the human behavior and the mental processes. Let's just remember that the first cognitivist current, that uh, so-called the computer symbolic model, is based on a supposed analogy of human information processing with a sequential computer. The second model, uh, we call it the connexionism, connexionism uh, assimilates the neural networks to logical relations. In this cognitivist approach, cognitive operations are treated in a, an isolated way more precisely in a solipsistic way, as if the individual were, process, were processing information without being inserted in his social and his cultural context. In this purely cognitivist perspective of the knowing process, there would be only one valid way to process the information that scientific and formal way. Otherwise, it would be biased according to the model. As social psychologists, we are all familiar with a huge number of researchers and laboratory experiments designed to detect and to explore these biases. In this cognitivist behavioral uh, theory, 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 theory framework, the fact that two out of three subjects do not reason like good scientists was explained firstly by a limited ability of ordinary people to process information. Secondly, um, the explanation was that the with, uh, about the principle of the mind economy. Uh, to explain this limited uh, ability. The problem is that using information, rational and correct information, or awareness raising campaigns and strategies for the adoption of appropriate contexts has been failing since decades. Whether the prevention of risky behaviors, disease transmission, religious radicalization, etc., no action based on simple rational information seems sufficient to induce appropriate behavior change. We even observe sometimes the opposite with a boomerang effect 
facing attempts to influence individuals reinforce sometimes their uh, inadapted uh, behavior. The title of a book uh, gathering seven Moscovici's texts is very revealing in this respect. The title is The Scandal of the Social Thinking. This scandal refers to the fact that in a culture that claims to be based on the science and the reason as the Western one still knows beliefs, superstitions, races, sexes, etc. Moreover, one of Moscovici's contributions, that of the cognitive polyphasia, means that even a scientist may, in certain situations, use informal thinking and vice versa. Cognitive polyphasia means that the individual alternates the forms of thinking, a formal one and that of the common sense, according to circumstances. This is also an illustration of the inadequacy of the cognitive only approach. In the context of what it seems to be cognitivism crisis, the social thinking model proposes the deal with the common sense knowledge issue, questioning the classical vision of what rationality itself is. Let's recall that since Aristotle, then Descartes in France, there has been a duality within the thinking conception, a duality between rational and irrational way of thinking. This duality can also be found in the opposition between the individual mind and the social mind notions. In this perspective, truth could be discovered only by the individual alone. In this concern, let's remember Descartes cogito, I think, therefore I am. In the same lineage, there are also oppositions between logical or scientific way of thinking and magical or pre-logical way of thinking. Similarly, we find an opposition between the individual thinking and the collective thinking, between intellectual or elite's way of thinking and that of the crowd or the masses. And of course, uh, we must not forget the strong opposition between an alleged civilized thinking and that of the alleged primitive societies as con conceived by an anthropology that emerged in the era of the 19th and 20th centuries colonialism. The social cognition approach for its part makes a distinction distinction between expert knowledge and everyday common sense. In contrast, in Moscovici's view, the rationality isn't considered according to a predefined, fixed and universal pattern. In his view, we must consider rationality by placing it in a broader framework that encompasses it that of the thinking form in which it takes shape. Taking into, into account the fundamental status of the thinking forms implies to take into account the general context in which it is generated, namely the culture. On the other hand, the apprehend, to apprehend the common sense way of thinking we should explore the social representations that characterize a given group. To understand this, we must go back to the work and reflections of certain ancestors of the approach. But first, let's point out that according to Denis Chaudet's definition, social representations are a form of knowledge that is socially and collectively elaborated through communications and which determines behavior. So let's see now what some pioneer, pioneers uh, said. For Levi Brühl, for example, 
the specificities of the ordinary subject way of thinking are not due to a lack of reasoning, reasoning but to particular collective representations. Even scientific representations have their origin in representations. That's what said Moscovici and Vignot, for instance, or Coiré or Fleck, etc. Uh, Durkheim said that even scientific representations have their origin in religious beliefs. As an illustration, uh, in Newton's time, for, for example, rationality was uh, deterministic, was considered as determinism, with the non-contradiction as a criterion of rationality. At that time, scientists were looking for constants in, in nature. Nowadays, scientific rationality is uh, statistical. It looks for probabilities. It recognizes the role of disorder and accepts uncertainty. uncertainty. So we can see the, 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 the variety of scientific uh, perspectives. More generally, according to levi Brule, it is impossible to propose an absolute criterion for rationality that is independent of collective representation and the society that produces them. Moscovici has a strong formula in this sense. He said, all that is rational is social, and all that is social is rational. In fact, the relationship is reversed in regard to what is asserted in cognitivism. It is the representation's content that states the rationality principle and not the other way around. It is the culture that allows the establishment of rationality by producing thinking categories and the rules of their combinations. According to Moscovici's words, the rationality criterion is itself a norm, is inscribed in the language and in the institutions and in the representations of a given, a given uh, culture. In this concern, he states, one culture, one rationality. All this uh, implies three important consequences. First, the, theori the theoretical consequences. Among them is the idea that there is no a single form of rationality. So the thinking of a given group or collectivity cannot be explained by the laws of the individual psychology, nor by the formal or the modern Western way of thinking. Contrary to what is stated in evolutionism, there is no continuum from supposedly civilized societies to supposedly primitive ones, from the least evolved to the most evolved, etc. But there is different rationalities based on different postulates. Therefore, we cannot create a hierarchy between thinking forms nor between societies. <clears throat> All humankind, whether the culture, has the same mental functions and is able to perform the same mental operations. And if the so-called primitive thinking is prelogical, it is only because it admits contradiction, unlike formal thinking. To understand a particular rationality, common thinking must be considered in itself in an ind inductive, heuristic and holistic way where each belief is related to the other. Another point needs to be made about this. Moscovici substitutes 
for the rational versus irrational opposition, a distinction between, on one hand, representations whose core is made up of affective beliefs. These, these representations are impervious to experience or contradiction, and it gives little individual variations. On the other hand, representations based on the fluid and pragmatic knowledge. These representations are determined by failures, by successes, and by experience, experiences in general. It gives individuals the possibility of criticism. Each culture combines this kind of representations and connects them to each other according to its history, its goals, and its other characteristics. Among the consequences of what I outlined at the beginning are also, secondly, the, the consequences in the very definition of the social psychology object. The primacy of thinking forms of the cognitive operations means that social thinking must be the raw material of social psychology, according to Moscovici. This raw material is based on social representations. In the world of Moscovici, there is a primacy of social representations over perception and of reason. More precisely, social representations determine the concepts, selection, and combination, the association of common sense assertions with each other, the classificatory categories, the explanations and the causal attribution, etc. That's what makes Jodelet, the Jodelet uh, asserts, the theory of social representation is, uh, I'm quoting her, a holistic approach of systems that preside over the cognitive operations combination as thinking forms. Uh, as a third consequence of what I have said, there is a fundamental epistemological issue that is, I think, very important for us as researchers or interveners in human and social sciences. It concerns the foundation from which we researchers or interveners working in a particular cultural context build our scientific or observation objects and interpret results about them. And to comply with Moscovici's wording, our own categories as researchers or interveners operate as irresistible ideas. That means that they seem to us as unviolable because dependent on a seemingly external reality. The rationality relativism questioned those supposed no negotiable character of our own thinking categories. Wittgenstein said about this that one's word vision doesn't arise from one's conviction of its straightness, but it is the inherited background in which one distinguishes the true from the false. This leads us as researchers to question the postulates that underlie our own representation of the objects about which we study social representations. The names we give to objects and the very fact of constituting them as common sense thinking categories are determined by the basic postulates on which our particular own specific thinking is founded. That's a mental uh, gymnastic that requires to understand how our own rationality is built and is relative. As an example, we often make a radical distinction between modernity and traditionalism. It is also the case concerning the basic taxonomic categories supposed to underlie the modern society's organization. 
as that of the public versus private space or that of citizenship, for, uh, for instance. A basic postulate that, that often underlies our research uh, perspective is that individuals living in a modern nation state couldn't conceive the basic notions of life organization outside a modern and formal thinking framework. It is as if there couldn't exist interferences between modernity and traditional way of thinking. Moscovici challenged the radical distinction between modernity and traditionalism when he stated that there is a continuum between them. And according to him, there is a continuum between the most elementary religion and the most advanced science. Otherwise, culture is neither, neither a hermetic nor an homogeneous system. When different groups coexist, it produces mixed culture, cultural contexts, contents. In this context, we made the thorough exploration in Tunisia by focus groups of concepts supposed to found the modern collective life, the living together, uh, as a notion of state, law, society, citizenship, private versus public space, uh, etc. We applied uh, for the analysis, uh, a semantic structural analysis to the collective discourse. Uh, this kind of analysis highlights the implicit structure of the discourse by spotting oppositions, antinomies, that give the true meaning of the uh, inducted uh, content. I have to precise in this concern that according to Levi-Strauss, the anthropologist, both traditional and modern societies are characterized by antinomic thinking structures. It is an invariant within which there is, however, an infinite uh, variety of distinction types like dualism, polarity, oppositions, asymmetries, contradictions, etc. Our results uh, show that our irresistible fundamental concepts structuring our representation of the modern society organization are cantilevered. We identified dimensions opposing terms that correspond to an unexpected taxonomic category system, or in another words, to an unexpected rationality among uh, uh, Tunisian uh, people. Results show, for instance, that the private versus public space opposition doesn't operate for the Tunisian ordinary citizen. However, this does not prevent the explicit use of the private and public opposition terms in the common language. But another implicit active structure was highlighted through the discourse. This uh, gives a particular interpretation of a paradox observed in the Tunisian context, that of the coexistence of practices described as disrespectful to public space, like use on the work site for private purposes, for example, and a discourse from the very people practicing uh, them condemning these practices. It is as if those practices and the discourse about these practices obey respectively to two separate rationalities, one belonging to a recent modern culture and the other to an earliest, concrete, and traditional one. This reminds Moscovici's co uh, cognitive polyphasia concept, but in one hand, it leads to assume that polyphasia should concern, in this case, not only the cognitive level, it should also concern the behavioral one. In the other hand, it leads to assume that polyphasia shouldn't only exist between formal and common sense way of thinking, but also between two different culture patterns. To get back to the results, 
let's say that the implicit dimension structuring the space conception among the Tunisian common sense is that opposing a close to a far space instead of that opposing a private and a public one. This distance dimension seems to have a continuum degrees violation while the private versus public opposition is categorical. In this perspective, practices of the private and public space in Tunisian context should not be considered as uncivilian, but rather as obeying to another civility. We can draw a parallel between these findings and anthropology observations about the tribal territory division in terms of in-group, out-group, familiar, unfamiliar, comforting, dangerous, relatives, and stranger, etc. Moreover, this distance dimension is active across several aspects of the group reality. Geographical one, first of all, that of the neighborhood. Bio biological, secondly, that of blood relations and grouper, that of various ident identifications and symbolic or real affiliations. However, according to Levi Brühl, we cannot understand a representation element without taking into account the other elements within it. To comply with this idea, we have to take into account that this distance dimension have its meaning in respect to another principle that defines what makes society and the living together in Tunisia. Another finding in the research we made is that the living together is conceived primarily, if not ex exclusively, according to an emotional point of view. Society is conceived as formed with those which, uh, with which one experiences positive affects, particularly compassion. In one hand, this is mentioned about those we know well. And in the other hand, to know a person, one must be close to her. An underlying equation appears thus for the space organizing dimension and corollary for that organizing the sociability in general. The equation is being close equal knowing equal sympathizing equal being related. And of course, there is an opposite equation to this one. Stranger equals strange equals threat equals distrustful and equal keep at a distance. Consequences of this are multiple. In this context, otherness cannot be conceived as an abstraction. Otherness, alter, is recognized only through the direct and interpersonal relation, in situ. Others cannot be considered regardless of their proximity degree, while the modern citizenship concept implies a supra-order categorization of the person. Finally, all this corresponds to an implicit traditional value system, or in other words, to a deep and fundamental cultural dimension. I would say in conclusion that our reflection is in line with Levi Brühl's epistemological posture. He advocated to disregard one's own thinking categories as a researcher when exploring a particular community thinking and perceptions. I should precise that this should be even when it comes to the researcher or to the intervener to explore the cultural context he belongs to. What I'm about to say is a banality. The common sense way of thinking should be judged only by relating it to a specific society or culture and not in relation to our own rationality as scientists. When studying a form of thinking, we should not assume how we ourselves 
would have arrived at the beliefs and practices of those who adopt it. But understand it from, uh, understand it from within by putting our own mental categories in brackets. Our reflection is overall in line with that Moscovici advocated about uh, introducing the culture in the explanation of mental process processes. More generally, he advocated to restore the culture concept in social psychology. According to him, social psychology aims to become a psychology of the culture, of our culture. In this regard, social orientation theory deeply combines psychology and anthropology. The observations we repeatedly made in the Tunisian context concerning many social orientation objects lead, us, lead to assume that the thinking antinomic structures would form one of the foundations upon which social representations are elaborated. I wish to go further uh, regarding Moscovici's ternary view as defining the social psychology. We should, see, we should situate the ego alter object system in a broader one, that of the context within which evolved a given collectivity, with its cultural dimension, among other things. This global context with, with, would give a specific weight to each of the elements, ego, alter, and object, a weight in the system and a particular dynamic. Those weight and dynamic would be determined, for instance, by the cultural conception of the person, or by the collectivism versus individualism degree of the society. This determine the distance and its meaning between ego and alter, alter for instance, or by the value placed on conformity, obedience, or religious faith, for instance, according to the culture. Well, I will end here and uh, obrigada. Thank you very much. Fantastic, Professor Doha. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you for your lecture and thank you for spending this time with us uh, to talk a little bit about the theory of social representations and the Tunisian context. I could see that uh, from Mosco Moscovici, Thought is organized both by culture and by social representations and uh, at the same time the person is submitted to different cultural models and has the position of observer supposedly scientific of that same uh, cultural plurality yeah <laughs> so actually uh, we would have one culture but two rationalities one scientific and one of the common sense is that right um I could see that all of this works in favor of the rehabilitation of culture in social psychology. Uh, and the, the concept of representation uh, is a factor of convergence between social psychology and anthropology in relation to the concept of culture. So uh, uh, I see that culture establishes a link between individuals making their common action possible and definitely allowing them uh, uh, to survive. So thank you very much again, Professor Doha, for this class. I would like to inform everyone here who may have some questions about Professor Doha's presentation that uh, you, can, uh, you can send the questions by email and we are going to make this email available here in the descriptions of this video, okay? So one more time, thank you, Professor Doha, for your lecture and time. We really appreciate that. Thank you very much, Diego. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.